I'm Jordan Davis with Atlantic Marine and today we're on a 2020 Grady White Fisherman 236 and I'm going to show you the VHF radio basics. It could save your life or the lives of other boaters. Okay, let's go over hardware first. An ideal VHF would be permanently mounted on your boat with an antenna. You want that antenna vertical so that you can get the best reception and transmission. If you don't have a fixed mount VHF, a portable is a decent alternative, but you'll have to remember to keep the batteries charged and you'll have a limited range. That's two things you really don't wanna to have to worry about in the case of an emergency. Since the VHF radio could be your lifeline to help, you're gonna to want to make sure that it's tied into a GPS or it has a built-in GPS. Now all the VHF radios we've stall, installed at Atlantic Marine over the past several years have one or both of those features. This boat has both. Okay, now we've talked about the GPS features, you're going to want to make sure that you register for an MMSI number or Mobile Maritime Service Identity Number. That number is specifically assigned to your boat and when you register for it on a free service like Boat US, you'll put in boat details. That way if you ever have to hit the distress button, it's going to transmit your location and boat information to the Coast Guard, which would be really helpful when they're coming to look, look for you or provide help. Let's go over some basic operation of the VHF. Once you have it powered up, the first thing you're going to want to do is adjust your squelch. Turn that down until you hear static, and then turn it back up until that static stops. Next thing you want to make sure you have enough volume, which you should be able to tell that from your squelch check. Then when it's time to talk on the VHF, you're going to want to place that microphone three or four inches in front of your mouth push the transmission key and speak clearly. If you can get behind the windshield, make sure you can eliminate any wind noise. That'll help those who are hearing the transmission understand you clearly. And let's talk about a few of the VHF channels that are commonly used. We'll start with channel 16. This is an international hailing and distress frequency. So you only wanna use that channel to call another boat or a marina or in the case of an emergency. Other than that, there shouldn't be any traffic on that channel. Another channel with a specific use is channel 13. All the bridges in North Carolina monitor 13, and 13 is also used for commercial traffic like tugs or barges. If you needed to contact one of them, it's probably better to even start on 13 than 16. And if you're in South Carolina, remember your bridges monitor channel 9. Another commonly used channel is 22A or 22 Alpha, and the Coast Guard uses that to communicate with non-government boats. You may hear the Coast Guard ask you to shift to ch channel 22A or 22 Alpha if they're giving you a safety information marine broadcast. While you're out on your boat, you should monitor channel 16. You can monitor that so other boaters can call you and so you'll be informed if you hear some of these broadcasts I want to share with you. The first kind of commonly used broadcast that the Coast Guard uses is a security call or security call. If you hear that, it's usually going to be informational in nature and typically the Coast Guard is going to move that broadcast from channel 16 to 22A like we just talked about. That could be something like a marker out of place in an inlet or the waterway or reported shoaling. The second kind of broadcast I want to go over is a pon pon warning or a pon pon message. And that kind of message is going to be urgent in nature, but typically does not involve the possibility of loss of life or the vessel. So this may be a vessel adrift with engine trouble in the ocean, and any able mariner should try to render assistance in that case. And the final type of common broadcast would be a mayday call. And let's hope it's not too common because that one does involve the possibility of loss of life or the vessel. So if you have a seriously injured passenger on board or you're taking on water, a mayday call would be the appropriate call. Now it's not important to remember the terminology of security, pon pon, or mayday if you're the one needing the help. Just call the Coast Guard on channel 16. They may or may not shift you to a different channel depending on the situation. Communicate your problem and they'll make sure that the appropriate broadcasts get out and the right assets come to your aid. If you are out on the boat and you wanna communicate with your friends or other boaters, it's okay to call them on channel 16, but you need to shift that traffic immediately to channel 68, 69, 72, a frequency like that that's designed for non-commercial traffic and it'll clear that channel 16 for any other hailing or distress. Now that we've talked about the hardware, what channels to use and how to use the VHF, let's talk about how to call another boat or a marina. First thing you're gonna do is call that marina three times out. So call it out three times. Riceville Beach Marina, Riceville Beach Marina, Riceville Beach Marina. This is Miss Carson on channel 16. If you don't have a boat name, it's okay to describe your boat. So you might say 25 foot Grady White instead. Once you hear a response back from that marina or other boater, that's the time to shift your traffic to a working frequency. Usually the marinas will go ahead and specify that frequency. If you're on the receiving end of that transmission and another boater's calling you, go ahead and pick another channel to switch to. 
if you want to check your radio now that you know how to use it, go to channel 68, 69, or 72 and try to raise another boater there without clogging up channel 16. Leave that open for hailing and distress only. If you don't have a VHF radio, I hope you'll consider getting one before heading out in your boat this summer. It's just one more tool that can make life better on the water.